Hello class, this is Miss Augustine and I thought today we would do some heat and phase change calculations. So we're going to do some problem solving practice. I thought we would begin by solving for the heat absorbed when ice is melted. And heat absorbed or released is always the variable Q. So here's the problem. How much energy is needed to melt 125 grams of ice at zero degrees C to water at zero degrees C. So again, since temperature is constant, we know we're at the phase change, and the word melt is kind of a tip-off too. So as always, identify the variables. Here we're solving for Q, so that's our question mark. M is our mass, 125 grams. And since we're melting ice, we have to use the delta H of fusion, which is a constant, and it's 333.3 .3 joules per gram. So determine which equation to use. The equation that doesn't have delta T in it is the one that we'll be using, and that is Q, which is equal to M, the mass, times the delta H of fusion. Now it's time to plug the numbers into the equation. So Q, again, is equal to mass times the constant, delta H of fusion. And plugging the numbers in, we see that we have our mass and our delta H. And then we should always check to make sure the units work out. And grams divided by grams cancels out. So we're left with joules. And when we chug it out in our calculator, we get the number 41,662.5. Now we check how many sig figs, and it looks like three sig figs for this problem. So we're going to round to the third significant digit, which would be this six. And so then we see that because the number after it is a six, it gets rounded to 41,700 joules. For our second problem, we're also going to be solving for heat absorbed by water. And I thought this time around, we would solve for how much energy is needed to bring 75 grams of water at zero to a temperature of 100. So now you'll notice we have a delta T. So first we're going to identify the variables. We're solving for how much energy is absorbed. So that's Q, it's a question mark. Our mass is 75.0 grams. Our C for water, and this is liquid water between 0 and 100, is the 4.184 joules per gram degree C. Recall that C is specific heat capacity. Our T1 is 0. Our T2 is 100. So our delta T, and remember, delta T is always T2 minus T1, so our delta T is 100 degrees C. So now we're ready to determine which equation. We're going to use the equation that has delta T in it. So Q equals M times C times delta T. Now we need to plug our numbers into the equation. So here's our equation. We're going to throw the numbers in. So here's M, our mass, our C, the specific heat, and our delta T. Then we should check our units to make sure they cancel. Grams divided by grams cancels degree C divided by degree C cancels. Then we plug out the numbers, plug them into our calculator. Q comes out to 313 or 31,380 joules. And so then checking sig figs, it looks like three sig figs is where we're going. And so that would be the three. The number immediately following it is an eight. So it's going to be rounded to 31,400 joules. Now, for step three, I thought we would just go for it and solve a five-step problem. So here's the problem. How much energy in joules is needed to bring 85 grams of water at negative 15 to steam at 125? And this I like to call a walk up the heating curve of water. So you know pretty surely that if you are water at negative 15 degrees C, you're ice. And when you get up to zero degrees C, you'll melt. And then from zero to 100 degrees C, you're going to be liquid water. And then at 100 degrees C, it vaporizes. And then finally, from 100 degrees C to 125 degrees C, we would have steam absorbing energy. 
So, breaking it down to the steps. Step 1, take ice from negative 15 to ice at 0. That has a delta t, so we'll use q equals mc delta t. Step 2, we're going to take ice at 0 to water at 0. That means we're melting it. We're at the phase change. Step 3, we're going to take water at 0 up to water at 100. Why 100? Because 100 is where water begins to vaporize. It's its boiling point. Step 4, we're going to take water at 100 to steam at 100, that's the phase change, no delta T. And finally, step 5, we're going to take steam at 100 to steam at 125. The constants. Now remember that when you're talking about ice changing temperature, the specific heat of ice is 2.03 joules per gram degree C, which is different then the specific heat of water in its liquid state, 4.184 joules per gram degree C, and that's different from the specific heat of steam, which is 2.01 joules per gram degree C. And then remember that when we're at the melting point and we're melting ice, ice absorbs 333.3 joules per gram of ice for melting, and when we're at the boiling point, Water absorbs 2259.6 joules for every gram to go from liquid water to steam. Our equations for any time there's a temperature change is Q equals mc delta T. When we're melting, Q is equal to the delta H of fusion times mass. And when we're boiling, Q is equal to the delta H of vaporization times the mass. Now I thought I would throw in here our heating curve and remind you that we are starting at negative 15, which is here, and then we're going to go all the way up here to steam at 125. So the first leg is ice from negative 15 to 0, then we're going to melt it, then we take water at 0 all the way up to water at 100. Then we vaporize it from water to steam, and then we take steam from 100 to its final temperature of 125. Okay, so looking at the problem again, reminding ourselves that we're calculating how much energy in joules to bring 85 grams of water at minus 15 to steam at 125. So starting with step 1, at negative 15 degrees we're going to have ice we're going to take the ice from negative 15 to 0. Here our Q is M times C times delta T. Our mass is 85 grams. Our C for ice is 2.03 joules per gram degree C. And our delta T from 15 to 0 is 15 degrees C. And that comes out to 2588.25 joules. Step two, now that we're at zero, we're going to take ice at zero to water at zero. We're going to melt it. Remembering there's no delta T here because we're at the phase change. So Q is mass times delta H of fusion. That's mass, 85 grams, times our delta H of fusion. And that comes out to 28,330.5 joules. Now for step three, we're going to take the water because we've now turn the ice to water, and we're going to take water from 0 to 100 degrees C. So our delta T here is going to be 100 degrees C. Our equation, since we have delta T, is Q equals M times C times delta T, where M is our mass again, 85. Our C, and now we're at liquid water, is 4.184 joules per gram degree C, and our delta T is 100. So when we plug that in, we find that the Q here is 35,564 joules. Step four, now we've reached 100 degrees C, which means we're going to turn water at 100 to steam at 100, which is vaporizing it. We're at the phase change, so Q is equal to M times the delta H of vaporization. M, our mass, is still 85 grams. Our delta H vape is 
0.6 joules per gram, and that works out to 192,066 joules. Almost done. Step five, we take steam at 100 to steam at 125. So we have a delta T again, and our delta T is 25 degrees C. Our equation is Q equals MC delta T, mass, specific heat for steam, delta T, and that number comes out to 4,271.25 joules. Now, final step is for all of these calculations to add them up to get the total Q. So, step one, the Q was 2,588.25. For step two, the Q was 28,330.5. For step three, our Q was 35,564. Step four, our Q was 192,066, and finally for step 5, our Q was 4,271.25. The total energy for the entire process is the sum of all of the individual energies absorbed, and that comes to 262,820. Our problems all involve three significant figures, so we're going to round our third significant digit is the 2. The 8 forces us to round it to a 3. So for the total energy transformation from ice at negative 15 to water at 125, it takes 283,000 joules to bring water there. Again, 85 grams of water from negative 15 to 125 degrees requires 283,000 joules. Now, I hope that these problems helped you a little bit, and I will probably be making another tutorial soon. This is Ms. Augustine, signing off.